guys, that nor the lines on the screen if they appear. Because sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, this is Lolly Talks, my YouTube only podcast. And this episode I am really excited about. Which is meeting famous people from my perspective. Why some of them I get nervous and some of them I don't. With all of them, I get mind blown. I will say that some of them, some of them I get excited over, but I'm not like mind blown too much. But I do get really excited over some, and the reason is because uh, a lot of the time it is with certain dance teachers because uh, it's dance teachers that are really talented, really amazing, and work at like the ALDC at some point or something with the Zoom stuff and I usually, it's only the ones that like I didn't know existed, like I knew nothing about but then when I discovered them I really enjoy like their dance classes and I just enjoy seeing them and stuff. Um, I'm gonna start with dance teachers. I feel like I get nervous and I don't get nervous with different types of people on what they do. So like with dance teachers, I definitely say when I met Abby, because Abby was the first like official like famous person that I ever really met. And actually, fun fact, when I was a lot younger, I think I was like 10 or 11, like somewhere around there. There, I ended up going to a summer camp for, it was like during the day, so like my dad would drop me and Bella's sister off, because she was going to it too. She, he would drop us off in, in the morning, and then he would pick us up, and the thing with that is that I feel like every single day in the morning, I would get kind of like, a little bit shy, but not, like, fully, and then, and within, then we would get past, because every morning there would be a time period where, like, we would, where they had, like, a table of, like, games and stuff, and we would just, like, play games and hang out and stuff, um, as we were waiting for everyone to get there, for a while, or most everyone, so I feel like, with that, the fun thing is, and the fun fact is, there was actually a YouTuber that I know nothing about. They have a YouTube channel, oh, like Minecraft Dylan or something. Like, I don't watch it or anything because it's not like what I watch and stuff. But even then, like, for me, it wasn't a big deal, like, at the time. And now, it's, at the time, it seemed like a big deal, but then it's like, now... It's not a big deal, and it's nothing up against the person at all. But anyway, with Abby, because Abby was, like, the first, like, actual, like, famous person that I ever met that, like, actually famous that I knew of. Actually, not true. That is not true, because a while ago, I got to meet someone, well, two people, who are, like, weather people from, like, a weather channel that my mom watches and stuff. I'm not gonna say, like, the channel or anything because I think it, I don't think you can watch it everywhere. I feel like it's only in our area that you can watch the channel. I don't know. And it was, like, kind of a deal, but not really. Yeah. Not true. Okay, I'm now realizing one other person that I met that was actually really cool, which was Spider-Man. Or man, and that was really cool because, um, what actually happened, the story behind that, because I will kind of explain, and is that at Skyler has three brothers and stuff, and so, one of them really loves, like, Avengers and Spider-Man and that sort of thing. Taught him well. Because my favorite superhero is Spider-Man. Will forever be Spider-Man. 
I love Spider-Man. And, and I asked him one time, like, because he's kind, he's pretty, he's on the younger side. Like, the really little side, like, under 10. Like, and I asked him one time, I went, like, who's your favorite superhero? And he said, Spider-Man. And I'm thinking in my head, and who, he's learned well on that. Have to agree with him, Spider-Man. He's just personally my favorite. And so, for his birthday one year, they did a thing with Spider-Man and showed up, and it was a fun little, like, thing that we went into, because I feel like we don't go to every party that they do, but that was one of them that we went to, and it was really fun, and the thing about it that made it, like, I, and they had, like, a pool, and, like, it was fun, like, it wasn't, like, the most massive pool ever, but it was a good-sized pool, and but anyway, so like meeting Abby, I was actually, because I met her and Gianna, like on the same day kind of, but I didn't stay for Gianna's class. And the reason is, I'm going to explain why, which was in that moment, I knew that like part of me just had this gut feeling that I was going to be dancing a lot. Uh, like, and I kind of went, like, maybe it's a while, maybe not, but, like, for some reason, even I just kind of knew in a way that I loved dance so much and that I was going to convince my parents to put me in some form of dance class. Uh, and I just felt like having a family day because it was in the room I did in the first two classes which is also the day that I met Melissa, um, which is a hip-hop teacher that I worked with one time, and I generally loved her class. Because I feel like the thing is, I enjoy hip-hop. Like, I really love hip-hop. I love performing, but there is certain types of hip-hop that are, like, a little bit sassier or different things that sometimes, um, at first, when I'm first learning them, I get kind of like, oh, this isn't really my comfort zone, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try, and I'm going to have fun with it. with it. And actually, that's something that I have to think Natalie means for, is that she had done so many of the, or she's done a couple routines that are, like, sassier and, like, out of my comfort zone a little bit. And it actually has pushed me to be better because... At first, when she first did one, I was really, like, kind of like, this isn't my comfort zone, but I'm going to try. And then, and after a little while, because I, sh she might be watching this, after a little while, well, it became part of my comfort zone. So now when she does it, I'm like, okay, and I'm down for this, something that I enjoy. And I feel like I enjoyed it from the beginning, but it wasn't my comfort zone, and now it is. Just because I wasn't used to it, and I'm gonna, like, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, like, just so there is an airplane and then going on. But. I really enjoy it, but that day, my reaction to meeting Em, you generally, I feel like I wasn't nervous, but I was. Like, I didn't know what I was feeling. I felt like I was so over the top excited and so confident because that's something that I am really, I'm strong. The thing that I would say is that uh, I'm confident all the time, pretty much. I, every once in a while, there will be something that in my head, like, and I would never say I'm not confident, but like, I, or at least as of right now, like, I, so far, I've never really been actually <laughs> unconfident. It was more of always, like, I, I would be kind of nervous to do something, but I'm not, 
in the thought of like, oh, I'm not going to be good at this, because it was never that, it was always like, oh, I, it was never a reason, it was always just, I'm, oh, like, I'm a little bit nervous to do this, but there was never a reason, and it was never anything to do with not being confident, and so, meeting Abby, I was really excited, really confident, and I also really just wanted to do my best for Abby and show her, and the a thing that was really hard about it was that uh, it was something that isn't my best, and it really wasn't my best at the time, and now it's something that I'm actually pretty good at, which is a warm-up and stretch. And so for me, I had, I didn't really know what I was feeling. I just knew I was feeling so many feelings and mostly excited. And so that was my reaction to Abby. And then with Melissa, she was one that, like, I knew. Well, no, let me put this way. I didn't know who she was. But I straight off the bat knew um, from the beginning that she was a really talented and really good because uh, Abby wouldn't have had her working at the ALTC if she wasn't, and, like, if she didn't know anything or if she wasn't talented, I feel like, like or something, or if she wasn't qualified to teach. So I knew that Abby make sure that all of her teachers are, like, qualified to teach. They're all, like, good, you know, nothing, like, crazy or anything. Just um, basic things that you should have at a studio. And so, yeah, I'm going to, like, turn it. Does this work? No, I'm just going to do this. So, in a way, like, then... Well, so I was like, oh, I'm excited. Like, I was kind of, I was pretty excited for Melissa. And I was also, like, really just cool with her and, like, not, like, I felt like it's something that is an area. What well, worked with the thought of, like, knowing that it was kind of my chance to find out if I'm actually good at hip-hop. Because I always love performing, I always enjoyed hip-hop and stuff, but, uh, but, it's like, am I good at it, like, oh, actually, no, because the thing is, the thing that some people don't understand is that when you reach the professional world, which, in a way, doing these Zoom stuff, um, is professional world, because, they're like people who actually know things and that if you make a mistake, they're going to tell you. And they're going to correct you on it, but they're not going to be rude and stuff. So, like, when you read the professional one, you're going to know. Like, whether you want to know if you're good at it or not, you're going to know. Like, they will generally point out your mistakes and nicely and correct you because it's their job as teachers. Like, as dance teachers, or what you want to look for is you don't want a dance teacher that doesn't point out your mistakes, that doesn't correct you because you're not going to get any better. And when you step into the professional world, or world someone's going to tell you. When what should have happened is your teacher should have told you your mistakes and corrected you on things so you would fix it and not have to hear it in the professional world. Well, unfortunately for me, but actually not unfortunately. Um, when I dance in the professional world, kind of. Like, what I mean is, is all of my teachers know what they're doing. And all of them work professionally as dance teachers, so it's not me being held back, it just, it just works, but then, yeah, so, like, I know, and so that was something that, like, I can know that uh, I enjoyed it, and 
I had fun with it and I was actually somewhat decent at it. Meant a lot. Now with Gianna, uh, I was really excited to meet Gianna Martellos. And I didn't do her class that day. And the reasoning was because of the fact that, uh, like, a lot of, we were also planning that day to have, like, family over and stuff like and what happened was that uh, we thought dance class started at 8 in the morning and ended around 11. Well, when we, well, all of my family got here around 2 and we found out it was, it started at 11 for us and was going to end at like 3. And the reasoning was, and the thing is that it technically did start at 8 for a lot of people. It's a time zone, and it was California time, and we didn't know that. So, yeah. Then, I was really excited to meet Gianna and the same reaction with Abby. And then, other than that, I'm, I don't think there have been any other teachers, like the teachers that, like, I actually knew of that like I knew and so like with that same feeling like all of my other dance teachers I was that excited but I was also kind of more cool because I knew them well I didn't know them it was that it wasn't someone that I like followed on Instagram or watched on YouTube or TikTok or anything but all of them were a great experience, and I never had a negative experience with one, with any of them, that I can think of anyways, or remember. Or I might have, but I don't think I have. But I wanted to get into, um, outside of that. I want to quickly hit on... Squad tour. Squad tour, actually, the thing was, it felt different with squad tour. Because first up, it's like actually like the squad, and I I was really excited and like really like fangirling and stuff in my like head. I, I am literally the biggest squad fan to ever exist. I'm wearing my squad merch right now, and so like. It was really exciting to meet the squad. And like, the thing was, I, we had to wake up, me, my dad and my mom had to wake up at 4 a.m. And then we had to get my mom, well, my dad had to get my mom into the living room in her chair. And then, and then, and I had to like quickly get changed and like get dressed and stuff. Um, and then, like, it was, like, a quick, we had, like, not joking, like, 30 minutes to get completely ready and be in the car by 4.30. So, turns out we actually got there kind of early. So, then what happened was that then what ended up happening was, so, we got in the car, like, I, I played Waffle Smash, like, I, I enjoyed the car ride somewhat, but I was really excited, and in my brain, I'm like, this isn't happening, like, this is too good, so then, when we got there, what happened, so there's actually a story, a fun, or er, random little story, so we got kind of to where we were supposed to be, but we couldn't figure out what building, or anything, because uh, our GPS was saying we arrived, but we couldn't tell what building it was because there was no signs that said anything about, like, Squad Tour or Piper Raquel Tour or anything. So then what happened was, was that, so we, like, I pull up, we park in the parking lot and lot outside of the building, and we think it's it. We're not sure. We walk up, and the door was open, and I saw Tiffany Raquel in it. And I'm like, we're at the right place. And, and he's like, well, we'll just go in to see. And I'm like, 
no, we're at the right place, we're not allowed in yet, and that's Tiffany Raquel Piper's mom, and he's like, okay, let's go to the car, get your stuff, because I had, like, like an autograph book and a Sharpie in the car, and so we, like, grabbed it, we and got in line, first in line, and that whole experience, first of all, we were in the freezing cold for a little while, and for like a couple hours, not joking, because we had to stand in line for like two hours, probably more, or just standing in line, like freezing cold, and it was all worth it though, like it was 1,000% worth it and more, because with the squad, what happened? But then it was finally, they announced, they're like, okay, so anyone who has a baby eye ticket, it can come um, up here because you're going in first. Or I didn't have a baby eye ticket. I would not recommend the baby eye ticket because what the only thing that you got from a baby eye ticket was a guaranteed follow and you got to go in. 30 minutes early and like hang out with the squad and stuff then what happened so generally then they're like I okay next up we need 15 people who have had the VIP now me and my dad he had a parent ticket which allowed him to go oh and with he basically got kind of the VIP experience but not really he, like, he wasn't able to actually meet and greet them themselves, but he got to come with me and stuff. And we went in, actually there's a VIP tag that I will show you. Let me just grab Boom. And then on the back it has a bunch of, here I will show you the back. It has a bunch of the tour stops and stuff. And so it was really cool. But I feel like, so I got that, like, I, like, basically the whole spot at the, and you guys know I told this, but the thing is, my reaction to the squad was so, different. Like, I wasn't nervous at all. I was really excited, and I feel like part of that is because with them, some of them, and by some of them, I mean, like, because in a way, I can kind of, it felt different, and it almost felt like I could relate to them in a way, because first up, I looked up to the squad, for not joking, like three, almost four years now, and I love the squad. But the main thing is that they do social media. They do things that essentially I do, and so like in a way, it, it almost felt like I could relate to them, but they could relate to me in a way that uh, no one else can. And I think, and, and I'll explain more on this in a second when I get to the next person on my list slash, well, not the next person, but, like, the person after and stuff. So it was, like, a really great feeling, and I wasn't nervous at all. And, like, then we had the JoJo tour. That, I felt bad because it costed my parents more than the squad tour, and the squad tour was better. But I only say that because with, the JoJo tour, it cost him more because of the tickets. It gets like, the, in between tickets and the $100 that my dad gave to my sister, apparently. So we could, like, stop and eat, like, dinner somewhere. And also, so I could buy something there. In between all of it, it was like $450. Like, it was a lot of money. Plus, like, getting there, like, it was a lot of money, but it was well worth it all. Like, it was well worth it, and I was nothing but excited. I enjoyed the show, and I feel like it was just the show, and Squad Tour involved me going up on stage, 
the meet and greet, the before show meet and greet, like all of this stuff, and it was amazing. And but the thing, so I loved it all, but I want to get into the last person, which is my reaction to Julia Marlene, I think her name is, yeah. I met her on Zoom yesterday, and this is why I want to hit on the feeling, is I was excited, nothing but excited, and so calm, and like, not nervous at all with her, and I feel like that's kind of the same way that I felt with Scott Tor, is that Julia understands. She, like, let me put it this way, because Literally, Jojo explained this a long time ago in a video or, like, a podcast or something. I forget what. Uh, and, uh, and it's something that is so true. And at the beginning, when I first, like, really started, like, dancing and stuff, I kind of didn't understand. But now I understand it completely, which is that there are people... There are people like my parents. There are people that can learn everything about what you do. They can learn everything about it. They can watch thousands of YouTube videos. All of this stuff. Learn everything about it. And they still will not understand it the same way as someone who doesn't. And I say this. This is completely true. Oh, is that because it's a different experience. Like... The thing of being the star, being the person in dance classes almost every day, because that's true for me, like, I'm in dance all the time, like, almost every day, not every day, but almost, is a different experience, because I'm the one putting in all the work and doing all of this, and enjoying it, because it's a lot of fun, and I'm the type where I try to enjoy every moment, especially from the beginning, because eventually you're going to get past those beginning moments, and they're going to seem small, um, but they're still going to mean a lot to you, because without those beginning moments, you won't be where you are, like, in the future, you know, like, so for me, you know, like, but no one, no one will understand it the same way, and I felt like when the squad, it was something, it was people that I felt like understand it. They understand the hard work. They understand filming constantly and all of this. And with Julia Martine, and it felt like she understood it too. And I, it was really cool because uh, everyone on that Zoom call, it seemed to be like almost everyone had like similar dreams and stuff or in some way, shape or form, something. And it just meant so much to me to feel, it almost felt like with Julia, I could like ask her anything and she would uh, say her experience with it. And that was something that I truly feel is special because throughout all of this, I kind of, in a way, haven't been on my own, but in a way, yes. I say because throughout all of this, on the thing, no one in my family does this that I know of anyway. No one in my family posts on social media constantly and does all of this stuff. I feel like that's not something that anyone in my family does. And so there are people in my family, like my parents, that really do try to understand it, but that still isn't the same. And that was something that actually... Up until a couple months ago, I would say, I was kind of on my own, and that makes sense, like, figuring this out, because it's in, like, the way that I was the only, like, person that I knew, like, actually, like, could, like, I talked to that is in the spot of being the star and not in a different spot, like, I'm, like, the only person that I could think of that, like, does this, and, and I'm trying to make this into a career, and so it was meant so much, and, like, there were hard times, like, there 
or sometimes when I had to get out of my head because I'm like, what if this doesn't work out for me? And I would literally remind myself of everything my crush said about my singing and just it would give me that like almost like it was like almost getting it felt more like I'm meant to do this and I'm meant to do this because I know in my heart and so I'm just going to enjoy it. And that stepping on the stage for a squad tour or it clicked like I generally felt like I should be performing like and I like it just like it just gave me that feeling of like I want to be up on stage and I like and seeing the audience because there were thousands of people there on there it just felt right like it didn't feel awkward and actually a few months ago I finally found people that get it and understand it which is Eva Kelly and Linnea. I don't know her last. I know her last name. I forgot her last. But she is incredible. And it felt like I actually had dance friends that understand this. Like, and even though they have different paths, because when they does like gymnastics, dance, and a few other fun things, and Eva kind of does what I do, but when modeling included, it felt more relatable and it worked and like so with like the squad and Julia it just felt special like I had people believing in me and they understand what this is like and everyone believes in me that I know of anyway anyway in my family but like in the sense that like people who do what I do and understand it and they they actually understand it to the fullest